Hey everyone, uh, Pup Twigs here, and I just want to cover something that's probably pretty difficult for a lot of us, and that's coming out of the closet. It's probably one of the hardest things that most of us have ever done in our entire life is coming out to friends and family. And I thought maybe what we could do is hear from some other pups and hear about their coming out stories on our National Coming Out Day, which is today, October the 11th. So the next four pups that you're gonna hear from is Cyber Pup Timo from Los Angeles, California. You're gonna hear Pup AJ from Brisbane, Australia. You're also gonna hear from Pup Eddie Sweet Cuddles from Columbus, Ohio. And finally wrapping it up with Pup Knox here out of Orlando, Florida. I hope you enjoy their stories. If you do, please comment on our video, reach out to them. Their social medias are all included and let us know what you think. And I uh, hope to see or talk to some of you all very, very soon. Bye from Pub Twigs. Hey everyone, uh, Pub Twigs here. Uh, joining me from Los Angeles, California is Cyber, Cyber Pup Timo, how are you? Arr, I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, doing really good here. Of course, I'm from Orlando. I didn't mention that, but uh, after about almost 90 of these, I think everyone kind of figures where I'm from now. So, <laughs> Time zones. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I wanted to reach out to Pops to find out, and I know all of the stories are not going to be comfortable uh, mm -hmm. and everything, I just want to find out everyone's coming out story and sometimes it gives them, you know, it helps them just by getting to talk about it. And it might help other pups down the road that actually see this, which is what I'm wanting to do. So I'm going to just turn it over to you and let you just kind of tell us about uh, your coming out story. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, first off, I just wanted to say thank you for doing this. Uh, I love uh, being able to share uh, coming out stories with people. I feel like uh, queer people in general, it's such a universal universal experience. We all have like stories of how did you know? How did you tell people? What happened? And yes. what was that like? And uh, the thing that's really interesting is like as depending on like when you're born and what like when you grew up, the stories can be completely different. Um, yeah, so <laughs> just, uh, I think it's really, really great. Um, yeah. talking about, uh, well, first when I realizing you're queer on some level is very different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I was in middle school when I found out what gay was. Um, but I was way younger when I figured out that like, oh, certain behaviors are off limits. Like, there's stuff that you can't do in front of other people because it's got to be, like, a problem. Like, sitting weird yes. or speaking with too high of a tenor in your voice <laughs> or um, uh, drawing pictures of naked boys in crayons on the on the restaurant uh, kids' yeah. menu. Like, that was off limits for sure. Uh, I don't <laughs> that, that, was, that one was a problem. There were, there were, uh, there were meetings held about that. Uh, but, you know, normal gay kid stuff. <laughs> yeah, of course. And then... Yeah. And then um, I actually, um, I didn't come out to anyone until I was 21. Um, so like for somebody my age, that's probably like on the older spectrum. I know people older than me, that's like very young. Mm -hmm. Again, coming out happens on a different time scale for absolutely everyone right. and yes. um, like super right. generationally different. Um, but yeah, I uh, I came out, I think the same year that gay marriage got legalized in the United States. Uh, okay. I do not remember if it was before or after, but I do remember like that being concurrent and being like, well, good timing, I guess. Um, in terms of like who I'm out to, uh, at this point, uh, I'm out to everybody in my life. Like, I don't think there's a person who knows me that doesn't know I'm queer. Mm -hmm. Um, there are plenty of people that know me that don't know I'm a pup, but I, uh, a lot of people have just guessed. And at this point I don't correct them. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Okay. Go off. <laughs> um, I came out to like my college friends first, mm -hmm. uh, and they were pretty chill about it, but it was also like, 
you know, friends in college. And yeah. so it wasn't going to be that weird. Uh, the real thing that I was worried about was coming out to my family. I think on, yeah. on some level, I believed that I would just never tell them. Um, and the only reason I did was kind of an accident, actually. Uh, so uh, the first person I came out to was, um, let me tell it like this. So, pick up. <laughs> uh, the first person I came out to was actually an accident. Uh, I, it was not planned, at least. Uh, okay. I had driven to a park to hook up with this one random guy in his car. It was very secret. It was very scandalous. <laughs> um, but after we were done uh, and he went home, I went back to my car and I realized... I had left the headlights on in my car and my battery was dead. Oh. So now I was stranded in this park at like 3 a.m. Uh, and it wasn't like super far from my family's house, but it was far enough that it was like I wasn't going to be able to walk. Um, mm -hmm. And the only person in my family that knew anything about cars was my grandfather. Um and to paint you a picture, this man is a six-foot, burly, mustachioed Christian zealot and hardcore Republican. Uh, I had definitely had it in my mind that it was like, if I'm ever telling anyone in my family, he's the last worst person to know. <laughs> uh, I, literally the last person I could ever imagine coming out to under any circumstances. So, like, after about, like, a half hour of hemming and hawing about it, I did call him and I asked him, I was like, hi, uh, could you come and give me a jump? I'm in this park and my battery's dead and here's the situation uh and he did and it was or he tried to it actually depended it ended up being uh too much of a thing to figure out at 3 a.m so he was like okay i'm just gonna take i'm just gonna drive you home and we'll figure it out um and so during this car ride <laughs> it was very very awkward it was like a really really long period of silence and then he finally broke the question he's like so what were you doing out there and I really, I thought about lying. I was like, oh, it would be so easy to just say, oh, I was doing drugs. How awful of me. I was smoking weed. Mm -hmm. And like, he would be mad, but it would be exactly what he expected. Um, but like, it, I was really tired and feeling just a little bit spiteful about it. <laughs> um, so I said, and I quote, I belong to a group of people that you don't like very much. Oh. It was too much drama. I don't know why I said it like that. It was un unimaginable. It was so loaded, so dramatic. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but he just looked at me and he took in that information. And I saw it click in his brain. And then he just said, I love you. Oh. And I was like, oh, wait, what? Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was, it was so out of left field. I would have never expected that to be the reaction. I really was like, oh, I'm, if we make it home, uh, I am packing a bag immediately and I'm leaving if I'm not physically shoved out of the car. Like that was my <laughs> expectations. And mm -hmm. so it was completely blown out of the water. Um, and honestly, that gave me the confidence to tell absolutely everybody else in my family, uh, like one by one, it was like a little production. Um, and that had varying degrees of success. Like my mom, for example, did not take it well. But at that point, the person I was most scared of yeah. telling already knew and already knew under circumstances that frankly weren't fair to him. Like I was being really dramatic about it in oh. the way I phrased it. <laughs> um, but yeah, the last person I thought would accept me said, I love you. And that really meant the world. Oh, I bet it did. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. I just <laughs> you asked me a bunch of questions uh, pr before this, and I'm just reading through them. And yeah, if you no, have anything to ask, well, yeah, I just you said you you came out at 21. How old are you now? Uh, I am at time of recording 29. 29. So so you've been out about eight years. So yeah, that it's, feels both so long and so short. Yeah, like hearing it out loud because it really feels like oh the actual part of my life that I count as being part of my life uh -huh. is truncated into eight years. That's yes. crazy. So did you run into any issues coming out to people, friends or other family, uh, other than what you've talked about on here? Or was it pretty, 
I, I don't want to say happy coming out party, but sure. it sounds like everything was more on a positive for you than for some other people that I've talked to. I mean, it definitely could have been a lot worse. Um, I, like I said, coming out to everybody else in my family was very complicated. Um, but also just in general, it was a different world. Like, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think kids today understand how deeply rooted homophobia was in the culture just like 10 to 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the stuff that I experienced of being hardships of being like, entrenched in homophobia happened even before I came out. Like, there was a reason I didn't. There was a reason I stayed so long. Yeah. Um, and it's just, yeah, and I, the, the culture was really, really different 10 to 15 years ago. Um, and I think people see how normal it is to be gay now uh, and think, oh, well, this has always been like this. It'll always be like this. Progress is a forward march. And mm -hmm. it's just not true. Like, that's just not how it works. Um, I feel I feel worried that we as a, as a society are not prepared for, like, the pendulum swing that's, like, already in the process of happening. Like, especially with, like, nonstop laws attacking trans people and yes. anyone existing outside the gender binary. Yes. Uh, and it's the same language, too. Like, it's exactly what I remember hearing when I was growing up. The same stuff about, like, Oh, like faux concern for children's safety about being around queer people. Lots of respectability politics. Like, a, oh, you can be gay, but just don't talk about it. Like, yeah. I just don't want to know about this. Or like these kind of things. It's like it's the same stuff, and it was the same stuff in the '80s, and it was the same stuff in the '60s. And it's like it's a cycle, and yeah, we just got to be really, really vigilant about it. Yeah, you're you're exactly right, and and you know I, I live in a state where it's rampant here and stuff. Oh, and I'm sure. Well, let's fall back into the closet again. So, I uh, I'm sure you've already answered this on your podcast, but uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your experiences. Well, actually, I haven't. Oh, <laughs> I haven't you haven't? Time, but no. am I the only? Am I the first person to ask you? You you were, and I was going to use mine as another episode as well, and, and so. But no, I'm I'm. This might work out even better and stuff, but <laughs> I was there in a very small community in Oklahoma where mm. you didn't come out. Uh, and so I had to try to play the the straight life and I got married and had three kids and all oh, three wow. girls. And then at 34 years old, I finally decided, you know what, it's time I'm happy. And I told my wife at the time, I said, you know what, I want a divorce. I'm gay. She was so furious with me because hmm. she thought I had wasted 15 years of her life uh, being married. And I said, no, we raised three beautiful kids. Yeah. I said, I don't feel like that my life has been wasted. I can just now go live it. And here I am uh, next, next, uh, this, this January, next month, I will turn 60. So, so wow. I've been quite a, quite a long time, but it's, uh, that's the best thing I ever did was come out of the closet. I, this sounds trite, but I'm really proud of you. That sounds really hard. Like there's so many reasons to have not done that and you did it and I'm glad you did. Yeah. And every one of my three kids are so supportive of me and my husband and, uh, and everything. In fact, my oldest daughter went to school and became a, uh, a therapist and her specialty is a uh, uh, therapy for people wanting to transition to another sex. Oh, that's beautiful. So I just, I'm so proud of her. And uh, she said, Dad, can I use your story as my story to tell to my my clients that are going to come in and want to go through the, the, the therapy piece of this? I said, of course you can. That's beautiful. So, yeah, Thank you so much for sharing that. It, oh, my it's, goodness. It's pretty awesome for me. I mean... My entire family, well, ones that are way out there, I don't even give a crap about. I mean, I, I care oh, really? for them, but I don't care what their thoughts are about me. Mm -hmm. um, because you mentioned when uh, marriage equality was passed here in the United States, uh, I proposed to my my husband, my my uh, boyfriend then. Yeah. And um, when we were in San Francisco, we took a trip out there. Both of us had never been there. And I, we searched everywhere trying to find the park below the golden gate bridge because i wanted mm -hmm. to propose to him there we never found it so i proposed <laughs> to him in the hotel room oh 
And, and when I told my on. aunt, she says, oh, that's legal? I said, yeah, it sure is now. <laughs> it's a new thing. <laughs> oh, here, here's in your face. Oh, I love so, so, that. Yeah, that's, that's really my story. It's a, I don't know, I, I can just live the way I feel like I'm supposed to live. I was out at work. I was out to my family. I'm out at home. Uh, my neighbors know. I don't hide anything. That's great. So it's, <sighs> it's, it's been a wonderful ride, and I hope it continues for many, many, many more years. I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, but that's my story and your story both rolled into one. Yeah, I, it's crazy how many similarities and yet, like, crazy, like, vast differences there are. Yeah, but it's, I just, the internet's what helped me come out. Really? Because you could get on and talk to people that were also gay, and then I would go hang out with them. Wouldn't wouldn't hook up with them because I was married, and I, mm -hmm. I that was something I cherished. And so I would go and, and hang out and meet them and make friends. And the more I did that, the more I realized, oh, my God, I'm happier over here than I am over here. Mm -hmm. And I said, I hate to disrupt our lives and my kids' lives, but it's time for me to be happy. And so I did it. And and my mm -hmm. kids have been okay with it. My my ex-wife was never okay with it. So, And mm -hmm. the thing is, she has a gay brother. Well, you so, never know. <laughs> you never know who's going to be uh who's gonna be like an ally to people it's always it's always a crapshoot yeah um you mentioned in your questions uh and also you mentioned uh your daughter being a, a therapist that's like yes. queer supporting um thought that would be a really good uh transition into like resources and stuff uh because in uh you would ask in the pre-material you would ask about resources um yes yes uh, and I, uh, I just wanted to shout out uh, the Trevor Project uh, and also the Trans Lifeline. Uh, they are both uh, suicide prevention hotlines that specialize in LGBT issues, uh, with the Trans Lifeline specifically being peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, so that means like trans workers helping trans youth specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and then outside of like, oh, what are like resources to call? Um, you're so right about just being around people and like finding community being so important and like finding that community through online spaces too. But I, I really find anything that gets you outside is really wonderful. I feel like now, especially online is most of what people do, oh, depending yeah. on their job, depending on like what their, uh, you know, resources are. There's a lot of people who still work from home. I'm one of them. Uh, so a lot of what I do is online. Um, and the things that really, really help are the things that get me out of the house and into, like, a community space. Um, and I, I found so many friends that I consider family through, like, pup community events, yes. specifically. Uh, at time of recording, I've been blessed with the opportunity to co-run a monthly pup event in Los Angeles called Howl. Uh, I do that with my friend Ghost Pup Doom. Uh, and at time of recording, we've been doing it for about a year. Uh, every single month we'll have an event where pups will all meet up at this bar and we'll like throw a party. We'll have like drag shows. We'll have like events and vendors and like kinky experience things. And it's just a really good excuse to get people in the same room and yes. get people really like talking and connecting and, and seeing that bring people and pups together is it, it's really magical. Uh, and it feels like the kind of space making that gives back to the community in tangible ways. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. Well, that's, I mean, I love hearing other people's stories. And I'm hoping that this one podcast that I put together with, with all of us in one, that so many people go in and just realize that, that they're not alone. I mean, that's the main thing. You're not alone on this. You've got plenty of support out there. You just got to find it. It's and true. It's really and, true. And so that, that's what I'm hoping this will do. And I just hope there's many more of these to come because this is something that I live for every day is just getting to talk to pups everywhere. And it has been so, I mean, I've got to talk to pups in, I got to do one from Germany 
Oh, which, wow. Which, uh, that's one of the bucket list podcasts I wanted was a putt from Germany because I know it's huge over there. But mm -hmm. I've done Australia. I've done uh, Chile. I've done Canada. One from Mexico. Uh, I'm almost a, to talk two pups from Czechoslovakia into being on here. Oh, wow. Uh, but they haven't quite decided yet if they want to be or not. So <laughs> That's fair. I, it's just, it's re really wonderful to know that we're everywhere. We're everywhere. Just, just like queers everywhere, so are pups. Truly. So, well, it has been so awesome getting to catch up and, and talk to you and, and hear your story about coming out. Oh my gosh, of course. Same to um, and, you. And, and and we need to, you know, make this a, a, a more often thing. Maybe come up with some other topics that we can uh, uh, talk about. Maybe uh, your events that you do in California. So Sure, I would love that. Uh, do you mind if I do a plug? No, do it. Okay, since we're wrapping up. Uh, hello, thank you all for listening. Uh, my name is Cyber... Cyberpup Timo. You can find me online at CybersexPuppy, all one word, and you can learn more about Howl by following at HowlDTLA. You have a radio voice. Do you know that? I've been told I have a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> well, it, it has been an honor getting to sit here and, and talk to you for a little bit, and uh, we'll Likewise. have to make this uh, another, uh, another time do it again. Absolutely. I'd love to be back. Good. Bye, puppy. Hey, everyone. It's uh, Pup Twigs here from <clears throat> Unleashed and joining me today. I've got uh, Pup AJ from uh, Australia. How are you? I'm doing good, Twigs. How are you? I am doing really good. I can't complain at all and stuff. It's it's good to see you again. It's been a while. Yeah, this is our what third time third interview doing this together. Yes, it is. So we've become a, a, a annual event that we'll just have to keep doing it all the time. That's good. So so this is a special episode that I've got reached out to uh, pups on. You know. The, the good and the bad of their coming out story and when they came out to friends and family and stuff like that and what they had to go through to do it. And I wanted to find out, you know, about, about your coming out story and, uh, and what you had to go through to uh, do that. You care to share it? Yeah, of course. I mean, I basically came out in the beginning of January, 2019. So almost well, in the new year, almost be five years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but I think I first realized, like, my sexual orientation slash gender identity, I think, leading up, like, out, I think, in the following year, in 2018. So, it wasn't, like, yeah, I always knew I was different when I was younger, but being an adult or a young adult, I finally realized that. <laughs> and, and so, um, how old were you when you uh, decided to come out? I was actually, I came out at 19, at 19? which I know might be a little, like, late-ish, youngish to do that, but I mean, we all come out th at different random ages, so. Right, there's, there's no specific time frame to come out. It was 34 when I came out, so I, I was late in life when I came out, so. Well, that's cool. So, so what was it like uh, uh, when you came out to your friends and, and your family? How did How did they take it? I think they took it extremely well. Like, they... I think they somehow might have had an inkling that I was different and more flamboyant mm -hmm. like growing up. And did you, you know, experience any challenges or, you know, that, that negativity tied around, you know, being gay and, and everything when you did come out? 
Uh, not really. Like, everyone was pretty much accepting to me coming out, and that made me feel like, even more happy that I'm able to be my truest self. Exactly, and, that, and that's the main thing, is just, you know, come out and be happy and be your be your authentic self. Exactly. So, did you ever, during that time, have to use any kind of uh, resources through the community or anything like that for support as you did this process, or did you do it all on your own? I... I pretty much did it, like, on my own to begin with, but it wasn't until my mom introduced me to her work friends, who were also gay, so that also kind of helped me out a little bit. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So, so your mom actually uh, helped you find other other resources to talk to that were also in the same boat that you were, which makes it so much easier. Yeah, absolutely love it a bit. Ooh. What advice would you give someone today that has not come out but is really wanting to? I would say just don't yeah, I'd say don't hide hide you are for anyone else. You do what you you do what you want to do and be who you want to be. And like fuck adversity. Do your own thing and in time when you are ready to come out, everyone will be like, everyone will either be, like, accepting or not accepting, but that's up to you to choose to be around the people who are, who are accepting. Oh, you're, you're exactly right and everything. So, well, I am so glad to hear that, that, that your coming out was, <clears throat> was actually a very positive one because we have so many people around the world that, that doesn't have that positivity tied around coming out. And it's good to hear that there are some positive ones out there. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, <coughs> any last words before, you know, we jump off of here uh, tied around uh, uh, coming out or, or anything that you want to mention on here? Um, well, I think since we last saw each other, like, obviously, you know, Ended up was in a relationship for seven years, no months. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Then the it was ended up being a mutual breakup between my ex and I. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's all right. I mean, I we but we're back. To, we're both back to being friends, which is great. Good. Good. Just it's just that during the whole. Thing, I didn't really understand like the stresses he was going through with work and yeah. I should have like done more put in more effort with him yeah if anything but yeah we're all we're both good friends and we both support each other well very good well I'm glad to hear that and stuff I know breakups can be difficult but you know most of the time they're it's something that's needed because you're missing something in that relationship or the other person's missing something. And, and it's just good to, you know, and it's, yeah. I think it's great that you guys are still friends. That's, that's pretty awesome. It takes a lot it to is. be friends after a breakup. Love yep. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was my, that was AJ 1.0 with my blue hood. And this is AJ 2.0 with my new hood. I like it. I love the colors to it. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess you've had a little bit of change in your life since we last talked and everything. And, and you know, that's the way life treats us. Uh, there's change going to be continuous. So Exactly. Uh, and I actually I, debuted. Oh, sorry. Go right ahead. I actually debuted this hood at the, at the recent Puffmas event here in Brisbane. Did they, did they like it? Oh, everyone loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And it also, and even like at this event or under the same umbrella of the event, like my good pup um, brother, um, pup Luca, who's Australian puppy 2023, he actually designed all of these shirts that I ended up, that I have at the moment. Oh, nice. 
Yeah, I'm always looking for really cool puppy shirts because I, I I love t-shirts. So, yeah, anytime yeah, I can find well, those, it, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, if you type up tusklothing.com, it'll come up with his um, website. Oh, well, okay. I'll have to look look into it then. Well, it was a pleasure getting to catch up with you again, and hopefully we'll. Uh, uh, I've got another idea in my mind for another podcast that um, I might have to reach out to you and we'll join up again. Oh, absolutely. Always looking forward to that. Yes. Well, you enjoy your, I guess it is Wednesday there? Yes, it is. All right. And I'm going to try to enjoy what's left of my Tuesday here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because isn't it like 9 p.m. over in Orlando? Yeah, it's a little bit after 9 o'clock at night on Tuesday evening. Uh, I was going to say, is the weather more hotter or colder now since you're heading Actually, I know, I think you all go by Celsius. We go by Fahrenheit here, but it's uh, uh, supposed to be in the 40s uh, tonight, and that's cold for Florida when it's usually 80s and 90s. Ah, that's pretty interesting. So, so the heat's on in the house tonight because it's cold outside. Fair enough. I mean, hopefully in the like next few years I can come up and visit. Yeah, I mean, come on, come on up. Uh, I'll, <coughs> I'll show you around and take you to all the puppy events that we have going on when you're here. That's good. I think I mentioned in my last interview with you that for next year I'm entering into the QPHC for the Cupa. Are you real? Oh, nice. Yes, I, I think I remember you talking about that. Yeah, and it's even more funnier that my pup brother, as well as my drag aunt, well, drag mother, who's also a pup, is also competing alongside me. Oh. When does when does that contest take place? I'm guessing it's going to take place around, like, the 5th to 7th of June. Okay. Oh, well, I want I want to hear more about it once we get to that point and stuff and see some see some photos and stuff of you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, well, don't jump off yet, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and and uh, we'll end the recording and stuff. And uh, I hope you just have a wonderful day. Right back at you for tomorrow. Yes. <laughs>
and we did it. And um, I remember liking it. I was like, oh my gosh. So I didn't think anything of it. You know, I'm little. I didn't think anything was wrong. I didn't think anything was like, you know, totally, you know, a sin as you know, uh -huh. um, a lot of that. So, and so I didn't think anything of it. And I began to really divulge in these things. A lot of these things that kids that age didn't really know what to do. Um, I discovered what, you know, you know, kind of figuring out how to masturbate myself at like five years old. Mm -hmm. And really thinking about, and the older I get, and the more I develop into puberty, my attention begins to shift less towards girls and more towards guys. So I'm like, okay, well, again, I'm not thinking anything of it. I'm still young enough where I can still be a kid. I can still be innocent. I can still, you know, maybe t potentially go out of this. So um, I'm like, okay, well, um, I didn't think anything of it still. And so, but I'm still starting to notice these feelings like, women aren't really, girls aren't really doing it for me, you know, mm -hmm. I'm all about the boys, I'm starting to notice these boys, I had a sixth grade teacher, and I really had the hots for her, <laughs> he was gay, come to find out, he slid into my DMs like a few years later, so, when that's so, oh. <laughs> so oh. I was an adult, though, I was an adult, so, was yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> none of that, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, he, uh, I would really begin to notice him, and then I would, you know, picture him in my mind. I would go home, and I would, you know, you know, enjoy myself with my visual. And I'm thinking again, okay, well, that's not real. As long as I don't tell anybody, you know, I, I'm, I don't think I am, but I might be. Yeah. But still, it's so taboo because being gay and being African American is total is very, you know, those two don't go. Mm -hmm. have a religious parent and an old school parent with a double no so i learned to keep this to myself right and then as i really have my childhood friend over we're beginning to experience more we're making out still and this time like years later we're still making out so i'm like okay well um this can um really be bad if they find out so um i just really didn't um really think too much of it um, again, I'm just like trying to figure out, you know, who I am. And it's a puberty, so it's like I'm thinking, okay, at some point, um, my goal was to maybe grow up, get married, be a, you know, whatever with my career, have a beautiful Christian wife, have a couple of Christian kids, you know, just really live the life of a good Christian boy. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so with all of that, I went to church every Sunday. We were in church Sunday morning. And then a lot of times, like, this is, like, in the 90s, so we were in church, like, a lot. Like, you know, we weren't as progressive as we are now. So it's, like, we're in church Sunday morning, and the pastor's anniversary. We had dinner. Sometimes we'd have dinner at church. Sometimes we'd have to go home and eat and then go home, get dressed, get ready to go back to church. So we were in church a lot. Wow. We were in church, like, a lot. So um, at this point, I'm like, okay, well, this is um, – I'm starting. And my brother – this is when VHS was still a thing. And we had moved to this new house um, on the east side of the city, and he had tape, cassette tapes. And I'd be, this is my first time introducing myself to pornography. And again, like, as I'm watching this pornography and I'm learning what, you know, I'm 12 years old and I'm trying to discover porn. Mm -hmm. um, and the girls are still like, I'm noticing the guys, and I'm hoping there's going to be something gay on here because this is <laughs> not, you know. So it was all straight porn. I didn't really. Exposed myself to gay pornography until I was 15. And then it was like a whole new world just opened up for me. Oh, yes. I was like, oh, my gosh. This is amazing. It was my uncle's computer. I think I put a bunch of viruses on his computer from so much porn I downloaded from his computer. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Um, well, my sister actually found out that I was looking at gay porn, but I lied about it and said no, and they were someone else. Mm -hmm. I was like, are you looking at this? I was like, No. <laughs> So I'm thinking something again. I'm 15. Or something I'm going to grow out of. My mom thought I was molested. And I didn't think I was molested because I don't remember being molested. I don't remember having to go through any of that stuff. Right. Um, and I've heard that, you know, it could potentially happen, but you could re not remember it. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think I've ever – I've had a pretty happy childhood. I was always, you know – I began to – when I well, when I was really – 
let me back, backtrack a little bit. I had a sister and she had a neighbor and they were both girls. So I enjoy spending time with more girls compared to doing our guy stuff. I remember going into this toy store and wanting this big, beautiful dollhouse. Like, I want to play with this dollhouse. Mom, buy me this damn dollhouse. <laughs> She's like, I'm not buying you a dollhouse. Like, I want this dollhouse. I'm not buying you a dollhouse. Boys don't play with dollhouses. Like, and then I remember being around all the Barbies, being around all the, my, my neighbor, she was the only child, cute little mixed girl. She had dollhouses. She had Barbies. She had all of the girly stuff. And I remember going over there and just playing with all of that girly stuff. And I remember really liking all the girly stuff. I like colors like pink. I like, and then I remember we played church. My sister and I, we played church. And I picked out one of her old dresses and I put it on. And I'm pretending like I'm one of the old church ladies, just like hooting and hollering and shouting. Oh, no. And then my brother comes and he's like, take that dress off. You're a boy, you don't wear dresses. And so again, I'm just like sad because I can't wear this dress. And then a few years later, my sister, she had um, this pretty kente dress. It was like an African design dress. Mm -hmm. Beautiful dress. I put the dress on. I was just like, I really look pretty in this dress. And then again, my mom's boyfriend came. Um, they, it was that's a whole situation. He came over and made this whole scene about me being in this dress. I took the dress off, like I don't, and I will, will put on my mom's heels and try to walk in these heels. I was like, what is the problem? Why can't I wear a dress? Exactly. I just, so I was more, my feelings were hurt because I was a very sensitive kid and I hated getting yelled at. Mm -hmm. So I really was like, I don't understand. So no, it I was just being innocent. I just thought maybe it was just something I, I had this sister and we always did everything together. Um, and so it was just like, I don't understand like why people have such a problem with me wearing a dress. Yeah. So I kind of grew out of that, you know, okay, well, whatever. Fast forward to a few years later. Um, this is like the late, it's 2000 something. Um, and I had really already exposed myself to this gay pornography and the skies were so hot, so beautiful. And I remember liking it and I was like, oh my. Um, and so after that I had to, I had to find it and I had to really, you know, enjoy this. And I just really enjoyed it, man. <laughs> and I'm just like, man, um, I can't go back to straight porn anymore. I can't look at it women like the same way I look at guys. So, um, fast forward to, to th I'm getting ready to graduate high school um, and I began to discover more things, more kinds of porn, like camboys, um, uh, really interacting with other guys, other, you know, guys on like, you know, chat sites and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really, yeah, really um, spiraling. By this time, I'm like super religious. By this time, it's time for me to graduate high school. I go to a Christian college, and it was this whole ordeal. Well, it was more of like a brainwashing place. I felt like I needed to be a Christian boy. I felt like I needed to if I if I go to this Christian school, then I'd be saved. I won't have to worry about yeah. you know being gay. But in all actuality, I was just suppressing who I truly was. And I went to the Christian college, and it was just really, really getting bad. Um, I was more so depressed. I was angry. I was yeah. all of these things, um, trying to be who I was. And I was just asking God, like, why are you not helping me? You know, here I am trying to be a Christian, and you're not even answering my prayers. Do, mm -hmm. you, even do you even have all the answers? Like, people say you do. But apparently, I'm not getting anything from you. You seem to talk to my mom when you talk to me. Yeah. Apparently, you have your favorites. And you don't love me the way I should. You people tell me it should. And so, it was just like this really cut and dry. You went to this college. You said your prayers. You went to, you know, a retreat. You did all of these things. And I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I can get with this. I won't be gay anymore. I won't be talking to guys across the country, you know, jerking off, listening to phone, phone sex and all those other things. Mm -hmm. And so here's a here's a caveat. I get so caught up in religion. I, 
Oh, man. Um, so I find this church, this service in Detroit, Michigan. And um, basically what it is is called like a deliverance service. 100% guaranteed delivering from all of your demons. I thought I was possessed by the devil. So I go to these services and basically you sit in a seat and you sit in a hard chair because the chair always has to be hard. And you sit in front of a bucket and you cough the gay devil out. Really? Oh. Wow. <laughs> I had to sit in the hot seat every Thursday because the minister said he wanted to pray for me every Thursday. I said, well, you're not praying for my sister. And she's being like super evil. And you're not. And I'm she's all, I'm always the one that has to sit in the hot seat every Thursday. And, you know, everybody's got all these demons. And I'm the only one that's going to be the most desperate. Why am I in the hot seat every Thursday? Yeah. So I was going to that for two years, man. Wow. Um, and so it, to this day, it even baffles me like, and then one day I made up my mind that I'm to stop going. But I've kind of, I transfer colleges. I go to um, Eastern Michigan University where I get my degree in geography. And by this time, I'm super depressed. I'm super um, just like in my feelings. I don't eat right. I don't sleep right. And part of it being stressed from exams too. But at this point, I'm just like so over it. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to um, – I converse with one of these gentlemen who lived in a town not too far from here. Um, and we're talking regularly, older gentleman, he was gay, and that was a very toxic interaction, but he helped me realize that it's okay to be who I was. Right. It's okay to be, you know, gay, and so at this point in time, like, I'm really in conflict with my family, I'm really in conflict with religion. Uh, that same pastor, a few weeks, a few years later, when I'm in the Navy, he calls me and asks me if I am in a gay relationship, and I said yes. Um, he said, well, okay, well, we're going to pray that you get set free from that today, son. You know, I had a vision, I had a vision. God showed me that you and this man were in a car wreck and that you're both in hell and that you're, he's, the guy that you're with is beating you up in hell because you didn't tell him about Jesus. And so... I, he starts to pray, and the phone call drops. I don't even have to hang up. I don't even have to hang up. The phone call just cut out. And so, you know what? You know what? Whatever. Yeah. I'm going to be my I'm I'm still not out at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm still not out to everyone. But it's just like all those years of constantly having to, to fight who I am. Like, why is it that? Everyone cares whether or not someone's gay. Why does God care if someone? How how, does, how can God send someone to hell for loving somebody who who's who's like them, who's the same gender as them, exactly, or who is not straight laced? First of all, no disrespect to heterosexual people at all, but the, if everyone were straight, it'd be boring. Oh yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? If everyone were straight, I get that. You know, there's the whole. Um, Reproduce, reproduction. Mm -hmm. Every, anyone, you know, it's, I get that. Everyone can't be straight. Right, right. Everyone can't be cisgender. Everyone can't be, everyone has a kink, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what? I'm like, whatever. I didn't have to hang up a call. And I'm already stressed in the military, just trying to get everything figured out. Um, the current relationship I was in was very toxic for me, so I cut that off. Now, the yeah. gentleman actually passed away a few years ago, but um, he it was um, like this can't be my first. He's very racist, very mean. Um, threw out the N word a few times. Hmm. Um, so I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna find somebody. This is who truly values who I am. Mm -hmm. So, um. It fast forward to um, getting out of the military. Um, 2017, I officially come out um, on Facebook as gay. 
and it was a very big relief for me um just like uh really coming out and really knowing that this is who i am right and i pretend to be something i'm not because the world says i should be something and yeah. i'm not you know why would i pretend to be something i'm not when i'm not that right and so it was just a huge relief and ever since then i've been, just been living out and i've been you know i became eddie i became you know a pup i enjoy my pup life um and and there's a lot of things ever since i've been gay i've been questioning a lot like i don't live a lifestyle i live a life yes i hate when people call it a lifestyle it's not a lifestyle it's a life you don't call it being straight a lifestyle right you only yeah. refer to it as a lifestyle when it comes to people who are lgbt it's not a lifestyle we live a life our life is just different from yours so, so I, 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 no, I was going to say, how old were you at 18 when you came out on Facebook? 26. 26. I wish I'd have came out when I was younger. Yeah. But then I don't. Because I was still living under that um, sheltered life. I was still living under that roof where um, at the time I was super into church. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, and I, I was met with a lot of support on Facebook. I was met with a lot of support from Austin Uncle excuse me, um, uh, aunts and uncles, family members. And I'm very thankful for that, friends. Well, yeah, because um, I was going to ask you, how did your how did your family take it when you did come out? Um, it was, I was met with a lot of love, surprisingly. I was met with a lot of love. Uh, more, more so love. I mean, and no one's going to, you know, blatantly come out and say, you know, you deviant on Facebook. All right. But I get back with a bunch of, so, I mean, if anyone who has a problem with it has never said anything to me, and I'm glad. Yeah. Um, but it's just like, I mean, I am who I am. I like who I like. Um, I'm crazy about boys. I love boys. The older I get, the more crazy about them I get. Yeah. I the more I'm just the more about myself, um, you know, about. And, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fluid. I mean, I'm fluid. Yeah. But I'm gay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I enjoy meeting other pups. I enjoy seeing all the colors. I enjoy, you know, seeing how we interact with each other. And I'm, I'm just thankful for the, there's a community out there of people like myself and just from like all over. Um, but, yeah. You know, and I, I'm, I'm, tr I'm truly thankful for National Coming Out Day. Um, oh, and I'm thankful that I get to share my story. Oh, me, um, I mean, and now. You're, you're probably out of the the ones that I've interviewed to this point. Yours is deeply tied into religion than anyone else's is, which is good to see it from that perspective. Yeah, it's it's um, usually like when I tell people the story about the deliverance, it, it kind of shocks them. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's very bizarre and it's very. Um, that's the level that was the level that I was willing to put myself through to not be gay. That was what I was willing to go through. It was agonizing because I had to cough and I would always come from home without a voice. Yeah. And, cough very much. Well, and I was like, you know what? I am. I mean, if God can come down here and talk to me himself, I'd appreciate it. So if I'm not hearing anything. Yeah. So, I mean, even my mom told me she's prayed and prayed and she hasn't gotten any feedback about me to God. So, mm -hmm. from God. So maybe God accepted me this way. Yeah. You know? Like they say, love is love. It doesn't matter who. Love is love. Yeah. love, is love. And so, even then, like, I'm still learning a, a lot about myself and there's still a lot that I have to unlearn as being a right. gay man. Oh, yeah. And there's still a lot because, you know, it definitely can, when you're grown up in that belief system, there's like, you have to unlearn a lot. Yes, you, you really do. So, so it's just like, I'm, I'm trying to be as considerate and open-minded to myself and, and to others. Grant myself that grace so I can grant other people that grace. Well, and I'm not, you know, and I'm not saying I don't believe in God. I do. Yeah. 
but I don't think he's a god that people, the Christians have said he was. He is. I don't believe that. I don't exactly. believe that. Yeah. I uh, used to be. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. But I don't. Well, I'm a pup, so. Well, I love your story, and I just want to say thank you for, you know, coming on and, and letting us see a little bit into your life of when you came out, because that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I absolutely loved it and everything. And so any last words from you? Let's say someone is on the edge of deciding to come out. Any any advice you would give them? Come out in your time. Come out when you're ready. Don't be pressured to come out if you're not ready to come out. But just know you always can have a community here of people that are like yourself, you know, and, and if you're into religious, you know, if you're into like, if, if you're in religion and you are conflicted about, you know, being who you are, um, it, it, you know, I hate to, to, because it's cliche, but it will get better. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Point, it will get better. So, I mean, it may look terrible now, you know, um, don't cause any harm to yourself. You know, the world's a much better place with you in it. And right. just realize that, you know, there are people out there that do love you. You're you're a valuable asset to somebody. You may not know it. You may not have met that person yet, but at some point you're gonna have to be an asset. You're an asset to somebody. Just being present, being here yeah. is just a light of somebody's day. Yeah. And so you being your true authentic self may take time, but I hope and pray you get there and that you accept yourself. You accept yourself, you be confident in yourself. And other people will accept you. You know, if you're a pup, you know, you're awesome. You're awesome. Regardless if you're not a pup or not. There, there we uh, go. Well, but yeah, um, I just hope you guys are continuing to be the best versions of yourself as much as possible. And don't let anybody tell you you're not valid. Don't let anyone tell you your life is valid, is not valid, because... You don't live a lifestyle. Everyone has a lifestyle. You have a life. You have a life. Yeah. Yeah. And being gay is a big part of your life. So head, keep your head up, you know, smile, and you be the baddest bitch out there that you know how to be. I couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> I, I just want to thank you for coming on. It's It's been awesome getting to catch up with you again, and mm -hmm. hopefully this won't be the last time. Absolutely. Won't be. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, Pup Eddie, you go and have a wonderful Christmas, and, and I'm sure we're going to be talking to you again soon. Indeed. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, everyone. It's uh, Pup Twigs here on a special edition of Unleashed. Uh, and joining me as my guest today, I've got Pup Knox from Orlando, Florida as well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I uh, can't, can't complain. And I'm ready for the weather to warm back up a little bit. <laughs> I like, I, I, I like cool weather, but I just don't like it this cold at night. Oh, I, I, I love it. Uh, it's, it's amazing <laughs> I, weather. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, well, I just, uh, you know. I'm just intrigued by everyone's coming out story, and that's why I wanted to do this uh, special episode of Unleashed about National Coming Out. And uh, just tell us your story. Yeah, of course. Um, well, I was born March 3rd, or not March 3rd, sorry, March 24th, 1989. Um, at an early age, I knew there was something different about me, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Um, and of course, growing up in a very religious household, you know, we were told that these are immoral thoughts, you know, having to be thinking, you know, I shouldn't be liking another man or anything else of that nature. But um, I want to say it was early on in elementary school, I realized that there was something different about me. Of course, I did try my best to, to uh, you know, appease to the social norms of, you know, heterosexuality. And, you know, I'd come home and be like, oh, I, you know, I, oh, there's a cute girl at school and everything. But realistically, I actually had a crush on one of my oldest 
earliest friends growing up. And, yeah. um, you know, he kind of put it in my head that people who love each other should kiss each other. And I think I was like six or seven. So it was like second or third grade. Um, he put it in my head to, to, to do that. And uh, I went home and I, you know, explained it to my mom and, and I explained it to, at the time, my biological father. Um, they, my mom was kind of like, she kind of pushed it aside, but my dad was very, uh, my biological father, I should say, is very uh, harsh okay. about that, you know, the statement. And um, he, uh, he got very not angry he was a very abusive person growing up uh he grew up catholic you know he believed that the bible was next to nothing you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um follow every word don't don't like disobey god and jesus and everything else like that so you know that kind of messed me up and uh we jumped from different churches to different churches because of my family not understanding where they wanted to go with their religion and it was very tough on me and my brother yeah. but when i brought this information to him you know he put me aside and he said you know what you're thinking about is a sin and you will be punished for it and i got immediately worried because i was like i don't like making anyone upset or you know not doing what's not supposed to be right right so um of course i hid those feelings and it wasn't until middle school, and I do apologize for going a, a tad bit, um, not PG-13 again. <laughs> well, no, you're, you're but perfectly fine. I, I happened to watch my first porno with my brother. Mm -hmm. Accidentally. It was completely by accident. And um, <clears throat> he was more fascinated on the woman, and I was more fascinated on the male. I was, you know, intrigued by the body hair, the pubes, you know, seeing him, mm -hmm. you know, in the act. And that's when I knew at that time, I was like, oh, God, there must be something seriously wrong with me. And a little bit after that, my mom had gotten a divorce from my father. And that's when we kind of went from going to a Catholic church to a Christian church. Okay. Which... You know, it's still the same thing. It's just different practices and stuff like yes. that. So that's all besides the point. Um, we went there until I was, when they got divorced when I was, yeah, seven. And we were going for about seven years until I hit 14. Um, of course, being brought up like, you know, hey, homosexual is a sin. Don't, don't lie with your other man, blah, 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 this mm -hmm. and blah, 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 that. And in my head, it, I believe I was early, late middle school. Like I got my first serious girlfriend. But I was very not like I, I I loved her. I was attracted to her and everything else like that. But when it came to the thoughts of intimacy, I couldn't mm -hmm. figure out why. And um when I hit 14, um uh, my mom, you know, we were leaving church one day and I was sitting in my head and I'm like, why do we go to a church for a man who sits in a podium wearing nice clothes, driving a nice car? You know, consistently tell us, hey, if you don't do right, you're going to, you know, you're going to go to hell. Yep. And at that point, my mom goes, OK, you get it. We're not we don't have to go back to church. She goes, I wanted you to understand. What you think church is about. And, you know, I only did it because, you know, I went through it. You know, your grandmother went through it and uh, we wanted to make sure that you understand. She's like. I'm not extremely religious. You know, I do believe that there's a God and a Jesus and everything else like that. But I also don't believe that the ways that he teaches is a hundred percent. And mm -hmm. besides, she told me that the Bible has been altered many, many years. And, um, it doesn't have the same value from the first book to where it is now. So I took that to heart. And I remember when I was like, you know, on and off dating girls, and then there was a day where I accidentally, when I found the fandom, when I was 16, um, I started looking at all aspects of the art and everything else like that. 
And yes, again, I was 16. I shouldn't have done it. I accidentally got caught in looking at the pornographic images of the art. And again, I had those strange feelings. You know, the I shouldn't be attracted to a man. This this, this doesn't feel right. You know, from what I was being brought up, you know, it, it, it was in our eyes an abomination. So I was internally struggling for who I was. Right. And um, I want to say it was about until I turned 18. And I was really, I mean, I was at the point I was depressed. You know, I, I forced myself to, into a relationship because I wanted to appease everyone. And at the time, I was still in touch with my biological father. And he's a very big, like, yeah, fuck women. You know, let's have, you know, you know, women are supposed to be used for breeding. You know, he was a breeder. Mm -hmm. And um, that never sat right with me. You know, we, we shouldn't objectify women like that. Right. But anyways, but... um. I still had these thoughts of like, I don't feel comfortable doing that. You know, I, I mean, not to say that I'm not attracted to women because as I, I grew on, I, my, uh, my sexuality has changed, but I'll get into that. Um, when I was with, in the car with my mom, I remember we had just gotten done shopping and I was always talking to her about religion because you know, I wanted to be true to myself and I wanted to see what it had been like to be with a man. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting down with her or we were in the car and I told her and I go, if no matter what we do, we're judged by our sins, no matter what we do, there's no point. You know, we're not going to be appeased or anything else like that. And she goes, well, it just comes down to who you believe as you are as a person not by who you love and cherish and you know you, you for she said for me the bible means how much of a good person you possibly can be right. and i you know i took that to heart because i was like i'm not a bad guy you know i did everything right i tried to do my best in school that wasn't really the case and <laughs> you know i i uh i i i wanted to be good to my fellow person not man not woman person Mm -hmm. and something in me was like tell her you don't you don't know what the worst is gonna happen that's your mother she loves you no matter what so i remember we were sitting there in silence and i go well the reason why i asked this is because if uh, we have a i have a second gay uncle his name is ralphie i was like well if ralphie could be who he is and we love him no matter what what's that to say if someone in our family was gay and she goes, I mean, it may be difficult for your grandparents, but, you know, we would love them none, nonetheless. And I remember going, well, I have a feeling that I am. And she turned to look at me, and I'm looking at her, and she starts laughing. And I go, why are you laughing? She goes, you're not gay. At least, if anything, you're bisexual, but you're not gay. I go, what, what gives you that? She goes, you kept bringing home girls. I said, the only reason why I kept bringing home girls is because I connected with them in the, the sense of understanding their emotions, you know? She's like, how many, you know, we started getting into it because I was 18. And she was like, well, how sexually active were you? I said, I've only had sex with one of my girlfriends. And it was just, I think it was the beginning of when I turned 18 in March. And, uh, of course, you know, legal. Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. um... You know, and she goes, well, what makes you think that you are attracted to men? I go, I have no idea. It's just I get this unwhelmingly, like, comfort from, you know, if I find a when I accidentally do find a male attractive, like I'm more drawn to trying to befriend this person, possibly, you know, um, get to know them better and see if like we hit it off and mm -hmm. you know in the area that i grew up especially in the the school that i grew up you know coming out was a very hard thing i had a couple friends that were uh considered homosexuals in my school that were ridiculed and that was one of the reasons why i didn't come out in high school yeah so that was a very um rough thing for me because i see them getting picked on and i, I mean i would step in and advocate and you know protect him as much as, as i can but it very much 
didn't feel right to me because then I, I feel like I was living a lie. Right. So on to senior year, um, I had my first sexual experience with another classmate. And at the time, again, sorry for uh, underage doing anything. We were having a graduation party where liquor was served and, you know, we were all young kids and stupid. And uh, we ended up, a lot of us ended up getting drunk, including myself. Um, we had a friend of a friend who was there who was openly gay. I wasn't. And uh, he had an inkling, like he had a feeling that I was too, and mm -hmm. he wanted to experiment. Well, I wasn't completely in my right mind, and we unfortunately went in the back of the house, and you know, stuff happened. And at that time, I was put aback over, you know, that situation because I thought that, you know, like, I just didn't think it was something that would happen. Right. And um, it uh, it hurt me in the fact of, like, do I want to pursue this? Because a little part of me thinks that, you know, he assaulted me. Because mm -hmm. even though, like, I remember certain bits and pieces of what happened. I remember, like, we went to the backyard. Things happened. I don't remember. Like, I remember we got there. Don't remember what happened. And then I remember regaining consciousness inside the house, and he was trying to force me into a bedroom. Oh. So I, you know, that was very rough, and I had to lie to my friend to say that I had gotten a call from my mom telling me that she found some cigarettes, which I was smoking at the time, and she never did, but... um she found them and she was very upset and she wanted me home now because, mm -hmm. you know, and my friend ended up dropping me off and I, I've never told him to this day. I, I've never told him about that incident. Mm. And of course, he opened his mouth and said that, you know, we openly had sex and, you know, he was a better man from this and this and that. And it spread throughout my school. Oh. And because I was more afraid of actually becoming who I wanted to be, I hid the fact of my homosexuality at that because I didn't want to be ridiculed. Right, right. So I fought tooth and nail, and people were like, oh, I heard that, you know, you did this and that with this person, and, um, you know, I don't know. I, I was mostly in my head because, like I said, I didn't want to be an outcast because I was already an outcast in high school. Um I I didn't have many friends. It wasn't until like towards the end of like the senior year, I was a little bit more because I came like a little bit more well known throughout the school because of you know trying to befriend people by being nice and stuff like that. And um, I didn't want to lose, I guess, a sense of my reputation. Right. Right. Oh which, yeah. Yeah. So I denied everything. I just told him not true. He's making up lies. He was drunk. This and that. Look at me. Would would I be the type of guy to do this? Because, mm -hmm. you know, not a lot of people understood that, you know, I could have been possibly, you know, well, gay. And it's not the right thing to do for someone to out somebody else. Uh, that's no, their correct. business when, when and if they ever want to do that. Yeah, correct. And it was, it was rough. So I hid myself a couple more years. And I had a friend that I talked to regularly about the situation. He was a local. And um, he suggested on good terms and consent, hey, let's try this out just as a joke. You know, Haha, let's see how this is. And, of course, I obliged. I thought we had a good time. I thought he enjoyed himself. But after the next couple of days, you know, we decided to meet up at Disney World, of all places, and uh, with a couple couple friends, just to kind of do the you know last hurrah. You know, everyone's doing their own thing. Everyone's going to be an adult. We had graduated. Let's hang out. Mm -hmm. And he ignored me the entire time. He distanced himself from me. He like 
and I wasn't being weird about it. I was just like, you know, I wasn't being clingy. I wasn't being like, hey, do you remember that time or yeah. anything of that aspect? No, I was just like, hey, dude, what's going on? Like, you know, hey, what do you want to do? Or, hey, you want to grab a bite to eat? Or, hey, we're all going to do this. And he just blatantly ignored me. And, of course, I didn't take it to heart at the time. I was like, maybe he's just, you know, being weird. So I just left it at that. And when I went home, um, he text messaged me and said, look, listen, I can't be your friend anymore. And I, 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 was, I was stunned. I thought he was joking. And I said, for what reason? He goes, I didn't like what we did. And I know I suggested it, but... I just, I can't look at you the same way that you are because, you know, he was, he's straight curious, still straight. And he feels that I manipulated him to want to do it, Wow, which uh, crushed me because that was not my intention. And I did tell him off the bat that I didn't want to do it with him. Because I didn't want to lose our friendship. And right, he was exactly. very he was very headstrong about it. And I just I caved in and then unfortunately because of the situation, I lost a very good friend. I mean, I consider that guy my brother. Mm -hmm. like, my mom my mom still asks about him to this day. I'm thirty four right. years old. I was I think nineteen or twenty when that happened. And um yeah, she goes, Man, I still I still miss so and so, you know. You guys are like inseparable. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's so weird. And, you know, oh, he's doing his own thing or, hey, he moved or, oh, yeah. whatever. You know, we're just too busy for each other. And um, I still haven't told her that, too. Uh, but when I had my first real comforting experience um, was surprisingly. Um, my first experience was, I don't know if many Pops know the, the app. It's called um, Growler. Mm -hmm. It's for finding bears and bigger set men and people who like bigger set men. Um, I met someone there. We chatted it up for about a month before things hit it off. He was so nurturing in everything throughout the whole experience, sparing the details. And um, after we were done, I had told him that, you know, I consider this my first time because it was so natural and everything just felt right. And he pretty much just gave me advice of like, you know, he was a lot older than me. I think he was like 10 years older than me. And he told me that like, you shouldn't hide these feelings, you know, you should uh, want to be true to yourself. You know, if, if this is something that you want, this is something that you like, you know, tell your loved ones. And if they don't love you, Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about it. You know, you got to keep your head strong and keep moving. And that's when I realized I was like, you're right. I, I, got, I got to do this for myself. So I remember taking my mom out to dinner and I told her straight up, I'm like, I am actually gay. I, I, I don't find romanticism with females, not to say that I don't find them attractive. I said, I think I'm 100% gay. And she goes, well, how do you know this? And then I told her, I said, I had my first gay experience with another man. And mm -hmm. she's like, well, what do you think? And I go, I enjoyed it. I loved every aspect of it. She goes, okay, well, at least you know who you are. I'm not ashamed of you. You know, you, you're doing the right thing. You're a nice person. You do what you need to do. And I'm proud of you because, you know, it takes a lot for a person to admit who they actually are. Yeah. And for you to come out as a homosexual, you know, that's, that's amazing. So, so how old were you when you finally came out to your mom? Were you around 18 or? I was 23, I think. I was 23 years old. And, and, and uh, good to hear that you got the support from her. Oh, it was, it was a, a, a breath of fresh air. Yeah. And um, now you also uh, mentioned that you had a brother. How, how did he accept it? He had an inkling. He really, he like, he kind of had a feeling because after I told my mom the first time that, like, I think I might be gay, mm -hmm. uh, I told him, too. He goes, it could be a possibility, but it doesn't make you any different. He's like, you don't act different. Nice. I was like, 
yeah, you're right. He goes, he's like, you're still my dorky little brother. I'm still going <laughs> to like you as my dorky little brother. I was like, okay. Good. And uh, uh, growing up in a Latin family is rough because most Latin cultures are heavily based on religion. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as I as I got older, I started to pull myself away from religion. Not to say that like I was agnostic or atheist or anything else like that. No, no. I just felt like you know I wanted to separate my personal life from religion as much as I possibly can to understand who I was. Mm-hmm. And you know, at the time, my my parents were divorced. Uh, my mom had remarried, who I call my dad now. Um, he was a Tennessee man, hardworking, you know, sweat off the brow, bleed when you bleed, you know, countryman. And um, he was actually the person that I was more afraid to come out to. Yes. Like, because he was, uh, he came into our lives when I was like 15, I believe. I think it was 15. Yeah. And my they were dating and they got married in 2018. And um, I was so afraid to come out to him. Cause like he was, he was such a strong headed, you know, country man spit when he walks, walk with boots, you know, <laughs> the ranch hand, the, the, the macho, the one that owns the, the farm. He was that yes. kind of guy. Yes. And, um, I remember my mom was telling me, you know, she's like, you have to tell him, you know, you, you know, you, my, your brother knows, I know you're leaving him in the dark. You need to have him understand. And I, I was like, I'm scared. She goes. Next time he goes to the store, just go to the store with him. Just casually conversation. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let's try. Cause that car ride might be horrible on the way back. <laughs> so I did take until we were heading back from the store to tell him. And I remember I was like, at the time I called him Steve because we weren't, you know, that close yet. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, Hey Steve, I kind of have something I need to tell you. And he goes, Oh God, you knocked up a girl, didn't you? I go, no, 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 no. I was like, <laughs> I was like, um, so you know how, like, I don't know if mom had told you like things about me in the past with my personality. And he's like, what are you talking about, boy? I was like, well, I don't want to lie to you and I don't want to keep you in the dark. Um, I think I finally came up to the realization that I think I might be gay. And, you know, he turned and looked at me, looked back on the road, and he goes, and? I was like, are you not, like, upset? Like, are you okay? He goes, he's like, son, I don't care. He's like, you're you. You know, I love your mother, and I love you guys like my kids. So no matter what, who you are is who you are. And that was such, like, a weight off my shoulders because, you know, we didn't have a father figure until... My parents got divorced, I think of seven or eight, I can't remember. And then until 15, when he showed up, we didn't have a father figure. And mm-hmm. like that entire time, like my dad was like, <laughs> my biological father was like, you better hope that your mom doesn't turn you into fairies. And so like the long time I was like, oh my God, did my mom make me this way? Because like I started watching shows that she watched, like um, Trading Places and yeah. like HGTV. And I would be like, man, that's some good curtains, you know? So that's what's thoughts in my mind of like, oh God, my mom may have made, you know, turned me gay, but no, it never was the case. I was always like that since watching yeah. that first video, you know? Oh yeah. I was, I was just more intrigued in the man and I was just like, wow, he's, he's so beautiful. He's handsome. You know, he's, he's like, you know, I remember getting aroused just by looking at him rather than the woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um. Yeah, life went on. Everything was going great. I slowly started telling my family members, my grandparents who were super conservative on the fact of, like, homosexuality is a sin, no matter what. They were like, we knew he was gay. You don't have to tell us. We already knew. And I was like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, this is insane how well this is going. And then um, further down the line, I had met another pup who was a trans man. And I did not know he was trans until... um, we pupped out one day mm-hmm. and that's when I had another realization about my sexuality. Um, you know, everything, you know, with most pup plays, sometimes it goes just basic being a dog. And sometimes it leads to, you know, going a little bit more in depth with sexualization. Um, we ended up getting to the point of sexualization. And when he removed his clothes, I was floored. 
because I was like, oh my gosh, I I thought you were a man at birth. And he goes, no, I'm a trans man. I was like, I never knew. Mm-hmm. He's he's like, are you like, are you still attracted to me? Do you want me to leave? I go, no. I was like, I have a lot to understand about myself. And of course, we sat down and talked about it for a while. And he goes, well, I'm pansexual. The, the pup said, he's like, I'm pansexual. I don't care about gender. I don't care about pronouns. I care about who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there and like, wow, that might be what I am. And that's what I am today. No. I'm pan- so, yeah, that's about it. I mean. What, what an amazing story you have. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I got to ask because, you know, let's say there's somebody out there on the fence trying to decide that they, or they want to come out, but they don't know how to do it. What kind of advice would you give them? Take time, really take time. Cause I really wish I had more of the confidence that I did as a child to be who I think I was, Mm -hmm. but really do some internals, like searching. Try to don't do what I did. Don't do experimentations. I mean, if you want to do experimentations to see how you feel afterwards, that's that's great too. But yeah. you know, just do some really deep searching into yourself because you know, I know a lot of people who are afraid of coming out who are in extremely religious um households and are afraid of the backlash, but living in fear of who you want to be is such a harder thing than the potential backlash from people. You yeah. know, not everyone should live in secrecy of their lives. That's right. It's sad. I, I totally agree with you. Well, it has been so good to hear your story. I'm glad it turned out the way it did. Uh, Cause I hear too many that, that it don't turn out that good. And it's always no. good to hear the ones that, that, that have the, where their family support them. And that's the main thing. Is and, support, and that was such a scary thing. Like, oh, I was okay. afraid of being chastised because uh, my second uncle Ralphie, you know, I didn't know his story. And when his father passed away, you know, I was with him, and I was actually scared. I was, I, I was like, I wanted to ask him, like, Ralphie, how did you know that you were gay? Yeah. How do I know if I'm not gay? I was just so scared, and I really wish I actually took that time to ask him. Because I'm pretty sure at that time, I think I was like 17 or 18, I would have probably have known like exactly who I was at that yeah. time. Well, I just want to thank you for sharing your story. Uh, it was very, very intriguing. And and I hope it, it becomes hope for other pups or other people that are trying to decide should they or shouldn't they and, and are afraid to. Because that is a big step. It was terrifying for me when I did it. And I know how, how scared it can be. So thank you very much for that. It was my pleasure. Again, I I do enjoy these uh, little back and forth. You know, I, I do thank you for allowing me to have the platform to tell my story. And I hope that anyone out there that ha- like if, if they're questioning, you know, the community is great to talk to. We, yes. we, we're more than happy to, to be a lending ear, some advice, anything. So, and again, I, I'm thankful for the community for making me who I am. Oh, it's yeah. been great. Well, again, thank you. Uh, I, I want to give you your time to, to go out and enjoy your, your day since we're a few days out from Christmas at this point. <sighs> um, but you take care, and I know I'll be talking to you again soon. Yay! I look forward <laughs> to it. Bye!